There are nearly 4,000 recognized faiths that are currently practiced around the world. Of these, there are five main religions that around 75% of the world's population adheres to, and they are Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Hinduism is said to be the world's oldest religion, but humans have been practicing rituals associated with faith for around 3 million years. Join us as we take a closer look at seven of the greatest religious leaders in history. Number 1. Maimonides Moses Maimonides was a Jewish philosopher and intellectual from Spain. Born in 1135 or 1138 to a distinguished family, he impressed his teachers with his intellect at an early age. But his world drastically changed in 1148 when an Islamic sect called the Almohads captured his hometown of Cordoba and forced every non-Islamic inhabitant of the city to convert or face exile. The Maimon family decided to leave, spending the next 10 years in exile. They eventually settled in Morocco, just as Maimonides began his first major religious work, his commentary on the Mishnah, a compendium of decisions in Jewish law dating back to the 3rd century. Maimonides would eventually settle in Egypt in 1168. After several years, he began to practice medicine, and his skill landed him the job of court physician to the Sultan. In 1170, Maimonides began his most famous work, the Jewish Code of Law which he named the Mishnah Torah. The Mishnah Torah was intended to be accessible to as many people as possible, and Maimonides wrote it in a lucid Hebrew style, meaning that the text would not be reserved for scholars only. He then wrote the Guide for the Perplexed, later known as the Mora Nevikim, which attempted to reconcile science, philosophy, and religion. Maimonides' writings became a cornerstone of the Jewish faith, and his philosophical and medical work greatly influenced the medieval world. Number 2. Guru Nanak Guru Nanak was born in the Indian village of Rai Boy de Talvandi in 1469. Although we don't have much information about his life, oral tradition and legend have preserved what little we do know. At the age of 30, he was lured away from his life as a granary worker by a religious experience that he described as a revelation or a direct encounter with God. Legend says Nanak mysteriously disappeared while bathing in a river with a friend. Assuming that Nanak had drowned, the friend took Nanak's clothes back to their village to deliver the tragic news. However, three days later, Nanak emerged from the river and proclaimed, There is neither Hindu or Muslim. Nanak went on to describe a mystical encounter in which he had been to the court of God and drank a divine nectar called Amrit, which imbibed him with God's name and gave him the purpose of preaching the word of God. Nanak then went on a journey of discovery, although the places he visited have never been positively identified. Along the way, he preached his new religion, Sikhism, by singing beautiful hymns known as Shabbats. According to legend, he was accompanied by a musician called Mardana, and together they preached about the futility of empty rituals and the equality of all people. By 1520, he had completed his journey and was living in Punjab, where he became a farmer. He had founded a village called Kartapur there, where he continued preaching Sikhism, devoting the last years of his life to establishing the first Sikh community. When Nanak died, those from a Hindu background insisted he should be cremated, while those who were brought up as Muslim thought he should be buried as a saint. Nanak had told them that the Hindus should place flowers on his right side, and the Muslims should place flowers on his left. Whosever flowers were fresh the next day could dispose of his body in the way they saw fit. Legend has it that when they lifted his shroud the day after he passed, all the flowers were fresh, but the body had gone. Number 3. Hakuin Akaku Hakuin was born in 1686 in Hara, Japan, and around 1700 he became a monk of the Rinzai Zen sect of Buddhism. During his time as a monk, he experienced enlightenment, and in 1716 he returned to his hometown to live in the Shoin Temple. At the time, Buddhism in Japan had been appropriated by the ruling feudal government, and there was much emphasis on advancement in the priesthood. In contrast, Hakuin lived in poverty, preaching that religious practice was worthless without a moral life. He used unsolvable riddles, called koans, to aid meditation and invented the well-known paradoxical contemplation of what is the sound of one hand clapping. Hakuin completed many important works regarding the principles of Zen Buddhism, and was also a famous artist and calligrapher. 
His artwork used distinctive bold brushstrokes of dark ink to illustrate how he felt about the practice of Zen and the attainment of enlightenment. Number 4. Krishna Krishna is one of the most popular and revered Hindu deities, but there is enough evidence to suggest that he was a historical figure. However, as he is over 3,000 years older than Jesus, it is understandable that his life has been irreversibly mixed with legend over the years. Krishna is said to have been the eighth incarnation of the god Vishnu and was born into the Yadava clan in Mathura in northern India around 3228 BCE to Vesadeva and Devaki. Devaki's brother, Kamsa, had heard a prophecy that he would be destroyed by Devaki's child and tried to slay her children. But Krishna was saved by being smuggled across the Yamuna River, where a cowherder and his wife raised him. As a youth, Krishna loved pranks, slew demons, and performed miracles. He was a renowned lover, and when he played the flute, the women of the cowherding community were compelled to dance with him in the moonlight. When Krishna was older, he became a leader of his people and returned to Mathura with his brother to slay his uncle Kamsa. He then led the Yadava people to modern-day Dwarka, where he established his court. Some historians today believe that the modern figure of Krishna is an amalgamation of different legends, with Krishna being a possible pastoral god distinct from the Yadava prince Krishna. Krishna is usually depicted as a baby crawling or dancing as a young man playing the flute or with blue-black skin and a crown of peacock feathers. Number 5. Siddhartha Gautama Siddhartha Gautama was born between the 6th and 4th centuries BCE in the Lumbini province of Nepal on the northern edge of the Ganges River Basin. At the time, the area was split into around 16 warring city-states. Siddhartha is thought to be born into a family in the warrior or Kshatriya caste. His story begins long before his birth, as he is said to have spent millions of lives as a bodhisattva, teaching others how to discover the path to freedom from earthly suffering. There are many traditions related to Siddhartha as a Buddha, or one who has achieved enlightenment, and in some accounts, he was the 4th, the 7th, or the 25th Buddha. According to the legends about his life, he was born into the Shakya clan as the son of King Shadudana. The tradition goes that he was not born as usual. Instead, he emerged from under his mother's right arm, and could walk and talk immediately. At the moment of his birth, he is said to have declared that this would be his last lifetime. The story of Siddhartha's upbringing is pretty famous. He has a sheltered childhood, protected from all the ills of the world by his father. He was 29 before he saw his first elderly person and was confronted by mortality. After discovering that life was plagued by illness and death, he left his royal life behind and devoted himself to Buddhism. He meditated under a tree, receiving visions of his past lives and eventually becoming enlightened. He dedicated the remainder of his life to teaching the Buddhist principles of the Middle Way. He preached the doctrine of what would become known as the Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering. Siddhartha spent the rest of his life preaching and amassing followers. When he died, he passed into nirvana, ending his cycle of reincarnation and therefore his worldly suffering. Number 6. Muhammad, Prophet of Islam Muhammad was the founder of Islam, which is an offshoot of Judaism. He is thought to have been born in Mecca in 570 CE. According to Islamic tradition, Muhammad is a member of the Quraysh tribe. By the time he was eight, he had lost both his parents and his paternal grandfather, which left him in the care of his uncle who was the head of the clan of Hashim. Muhammad traveled with his uncle on diplomatic missions, and on one trading journey to Syria, a Christian monk declared that Muhammad was a future prophet of the Lord. However, Muhammad led a pretty ordinary life, marrying and having children until the age of 40. While engaging in devotional withdrawal on the top of a mountain in Mecca, Muhammad is said to have received divine inspiration in the form of the angel Gabriel who recited what would become the opening verses of Surah 96 of the Quran. Disturbed by his experience, he was reassured by a learned Christian who told Muhammad that he was indeed a prophet. Despite the reassurance, Muhammad kept his ongoing revelations to himself for three years. Muhammad spent the rest of his life preaching to his followers and recounting various revelations that he received. While some Christians and Jews recognized Muhammad as a prophet, 
others disputed his claim, leading to conflict between the Jews of Medina and Muhammad's newly emerging religious group. As a result of these clashes, Muhammad and his followers went to war with the Jewish tribes of Medina, eventually displacing them all. The wars ended when the Kureza, the last Jewish tribe in the area, was defeated, with all the males being executed and the women and children enslaved. By his death in 632, Muhammad had amassed an enormous following centered on Mecca, or Makkah, rather than the Jewish center of Jerusalem. The Muslim religion favors Mecca, as they believe it is where Abraham was first tested, and as it was where Muhammad spent most of his life. Number 7. Jesus of Nazareth Jesus of Nazareth is thought to have been born between 6 and 4 BCE in Bethlehem. Although he was born in Bethlehem, he is generally regarded as a Galilean from a village near Sepphoris called Nazareth. Little is known about his childhood besides that he was intelligent and well-read. As a young man, he was baptized by John the Baptist, after which he began to preach the Word of God. Jesus became a recognized religious leader in his mid-30s, clashing with Jewish leaders and amassing a following of his own. He was considered by many to be the Messiah. The Greek word Christos was transliterated into English as Christ, giving him the full name of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught the precepts of love and forgiveness for all, not just Jews but Gentiles as well. This didn't always sit well with the priests, who had grown accustomed to running things in the temples. Jesus felt temples were sacred places, but bankers and tradesmen set up shop within the temple walls. An angry Jesus drove them out. Factions of Jewish leaders feared his teachings would dissolve their power, and the Romans, who ruled the area, didn't want to be bothered by the dissent. When the Jewish leaders brought their complaints to the Roman governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate, he agreed to Jesus' crucifixion, which was one of the worst ways to be put to death at the time. After he died, his followers were convinced that he had risen from the dead and that he was the Son of God, leading to the formation of a new religion based on Judaism called Christianity. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. Check out our Captivating History book series to learn more about religions and their history. The series is available as ebooks, paperbacks, and audiobooks. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.